Wait until you see what was in this walleye's belly. How big of a muskie does it take to eat a 30 inch walleye and when jiggin' wraps bite back? We got that and more coming up in Target Walleye's Top 5 presented by Seafoam. Let's dive on in. Have you ever seen a walleye this fat before? What? <laughs> I was sent these pictures from Target Walleye reader Jeb, who actually shot this blimp while underwater spearfishing on Lake McConaughey right. in Nebraska. Yes, it's legal there. Right. That fish was 26 inches long and had a paunchy 21 inch girth and weighed 9 pounds 4 ounces. Now, at first glance, you'd think that that walleye was just swimming around like this. I'm bigger than you, I'm higher in the food chain. Get in my belly. But in reality, when they cut the fish open, they found some type of a tumor, they assume, in its abdominal cavity, which I think is a really fancy way of saying belly. Now, I'm no rocket engineeratist, but I'm pretty sure that probably could maybe be a tumor. I mean, either that or that fish went to Costco and bought an eight pound pork shoulder and ate it before it smoked it for eight to 10 hours on the grill. Which by the way, after looking at that picture again, I'm really not all that hungry for walleye. <laughs> Number two. A few years back, Matt Sision was trolling for muskies when he hooked into a 30 inch walleye and that walleye became bait itself. A mammoth muskie locked onto it and was thrashing around like it was shark week. Slow ahead. I can go slow ahead. Now we don't know exactly how big the muskie was because it let go. Apparently it saw Matt's beard and got intimidated and said, I'm out of here. But they estimate the fish to be in the upper 50s to lower 60s inches long. You're gonna need a bigger boat. That's five feet long plus. Mother nature, you crazy. Now 50 inch muskie is already big. I mean, that's kind of what folks consider the benchmark for catching a big muskie. Sort of like how people want to catch that mythical 30 inch walleye. That's the benchmark. So imagine a fish that is a foot longer than the benchmark for a big fish. It's almost even hard to imagine, but that brings us to number three. An absolutely massive muskie was recently boated with Captain Gene Bolton of Sunken Treasure Fishing Charters. He's a walleye salmon trout captain on Lake Ontario. But this day they had a nice, large, welcome surprise hit the boat. It was nearly 60 inches long, 59 and 7 eighths inches, and it was estimated at 65 pounds. So they were actually trolling for walleyes on the main lake when that behemoth crushed a flashy purple candy color Berkeley flicker minnow. So now we also know what the hot crank pattern has been out there. So giant congrats on the catch and release of the fish of a million lifetimes, fellas. Amazing. Number four. Anyone can catch a big fish or a grown one, but it takes some real finesse to pull this next one off. Something I think I'm going to call a reverse PB or personal best. Andy Drayling caught what has to be the smallest fish possible while snap jigging a plastic for walleyes. Look at that little bugger. Dude should probably just leave it on his bait for the next cast, if it's legal, which it probably isn't. Although it's going to be a pretty tight race for that smallest fish title, because I saw this picture down in the comments from Nor Lori Niebling. Go. Oh. How's that go? Lori Niebling. And I don't know, if you look really closely, that might even be a walleye on that crankbait. Those two have got the magic touch. Congrats on the reverse PBs. Which brings us to number five. I mentioned last week that it's jig and wrap season, what's possibly the most efficient way to stroll around and catch deep midsummer walleyes. Jig and wraps have incredibly sticky hooks. They're basically like a mouse trap for walleyes. But I gotta give you a little warning, they're really good at sticking into really any kind of flesh, including the human sort. My buddy Jaden Thomas has been crushing walleyes on jig and wraps all summer now. But look at this little throwback picture he posted of one that was lodged into his hand and it gets worse. There was an 18 inch walleye still attached to that back hook and thrashing around like crazy. 
Jaden said he let out a monologue of curse words that has not been matched since. <laughs> what? What happened? But don't feel bad, dude. That kind of thing can happen to anybody. I mean, it even happens to dudes like Al Linder. Sorry, Al, I gotta share this. One last cast. We were on a phenomenal bite. I'm catching fish like crazy, and I got greedy. One last cast, and it's a jig and wrap, but two of the hooks, the hooks are small. Yeah, 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 you know, and it pinched it, and I couldn't pick, pull it out with the old line trick. So I'm in the emergency ward here in Burrow. I love how Al is still so upbeat and chill, even though he's literally a walking pincushion. Maybe it has to do with the fact that he just caught 50 walleyes or whatever. By the way, did you notice a little trend here? Both of those fellas, yes, they got hooked themselves by jigging wraps, but they also caught the snot out of walleyes right up until they had to go get some work done. <laughs> it's time. Throw the jigging wrap. There you have it. That wraps up this week's top five. Big shout out to Seafoam for keeping us running smooth and literally making this video series possible. Please make sure to check out seafoamworks.com. If you want more walleye fishing content like this, we send it out free every Wednesday and Friday. Sign up at targetwalleye.com, straight to your inbox. No spam, no junk, just walleye fishing goodness. All right, I'm out of here. I'll see you back in seven days.